we are going to discuss today as uh, how to get started in the freelancing industry, especially for newcomers. Then we'll talk about a few tips about how to get started on different freelancing <laughs> platforms. Then we'll talk about skill building techniques and definitely we're going to talk about your favorite CAD tools also. And at the end, we are also going to talk about uh, uh, mentors, uh, whom to follow or not. And also, uh, we'll have a, a 10 or 15 minutes Q&A session where you guys can ask questions. Uh, so uh, now I will introduce myself. So I'm, I'm Prasant Kumar. I'm a freelancer CAD designer, full-time freelancer CAD designer. I, I work on projects related to CAD design, drafting and all these things. Uh, so uh, I'm a graduate mechanical engineer and uh, I had experience of about seven years of total industrial experience. So this is all about me and uh, today I'm hosting this event and uh, there is a guest with us, Mr. Hamid M. A. Kalwati. I think I'm pronouncing it right, Hamid. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're always right, okay. Prashant. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that, but yeah, I believe that I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, so uh, Mr. Hamid is with us today and I want him to introduce uh, himself in his own words. So, so Hamid, please tell me about yourself. Tell us about yeah, hello yourself. All. Uh, uh, yeah, hello all. I'm, my name is Hamid Kalwati and <clears throat> I'm just a normal mechanical design engineer, just like you all. It is not like I have so much of special power or something like that. It is just the difference of I have ex a little bit extra of uh, experiences which making me kind of you know uh, look different from you all so uh, with this session I really hope that you all is you all are going to have a, a detailed uh, information that will make you guys be ready to get started with freelancing in the mechanic engineering domain and uh, being 3 p.m. or 3 5 p.m. I really can understand that you guys are uh, would have already had a, f a stomach full of lunch so I will try my best to not make this session a boring one. Okay, so let's see how it goes. And uh, and throughout the session, please note down the uh, questions uh, that you guys you guys are going to have. And uh, we are going to have a little bit of uh, almost ten to fifteen minutes, uh, right, Prashant? So we have a separate yeah, yeah. Uh, answer session at the end of this uh, call. So hopefully uh, we will try our best to explain each and every one of your uh, queries. Okay, so that is it. Uh, uh, with this um, introduction, I guess, Prashant. So let's get, uh, dig in deep. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Hamid, for introducing yourself. So uh, now we'll uh, just proceed with our discussion points that uh, whatever we had planned for this event today. So the first thing is like, uh, is about life. Like, uh, how is your life going as a freelancer, Hamid? And whether you are enjoying this uh, new profession, I think it's yeah. not new, very common in uh, nowadays, yeah. but uh, still I just want, uh, we wanted to know that whether you are enjoying it or what are the things that you find very challenging in this particular profession? Okay, so let me just give a short brief about uh, my own experiences. And after that, let me give what are the pros and what are the cons, downsides and the upsides. Okay? So okay. it's been almost three to four years. And now, to be honest, after these many years of so much of hustling, I'm really enjoying my life. Uh, I'm just uh, having my life as I wanted to. So, OK, with this statement, you guys should not judge that whenever you're getting started with freelancing, your life is going to be super enjoyable. OK, so with that Definitely. being said, let me talk about the pros and cons that usually people will have while they're getting started with freelancing. OK. So let me talk about the upsides, the pros. Okay. So the first pro uh, or the first upside or for the first advantage being freelancer is that we can be uh, we can be totally independent. We won't be having any boss to us or we won't be having any employer to us so that we can we will have our own freedom to make decisions on our life. Okay. And this is actually a downside as well, but I will talk about this. Okay. And the second upside I would say is uh, we will have a lot more of exposure. For example, let's say if one of my friend is uh, working on an IT company, okay, so he, the people that he will be connecting is only his colleagues, you know, only his teammates and only his employers. Rather, if you're going to be a freelancer, Definitely. the exposure that you're going to get is super high. You will get to connect with the CEOs, you will get to connect with founders, you will get to connect with you no know, director, managers, D, MDs, uh, so whoever the people are in those higher level, you will be getting in connect connection with them right so at the Definitely. initial uh, phase of course you will be uh, there is a lot of chance that you might 
do wrong things when you are connecting but you know with experience you will get a lot of exposure like how to react to people how to talk to people so you know your your lifestyle is going to be changed on a professional level you will get to know much more things on a professional career side when compared to a normal employee who is working on a 9 to 5 job hope that makes sense Definitely. that is the second mm-hmm. thing which is exposure you will get a lot of exposure and the third thing is it's like you can work from you will have the freedom of you can work from anywhere you can be at home you can be at your workspace or you can be at your friends a festival site so wherever you want you you will have that freedom to go and apparently you can travel as you like if your if your income is really good and if you're really having a good experience in freelancing okay so these are the main three upside or advantage of being a freelancer i would say on the other side on the other side uh as i said you are totally independent which is a main downside i would say there won't be anyone to push you right there yeah. there are few yeah, people we will be there you know only if someone is pushing us we will be doing something right right so which uh, uh you know derives to the second point second downside is there is there is a lot of probability that we might become super lazy right for example if i'm working on a 95 job if i'm not getting if i'm not signing in at 8:59 am there will be someone who's asking me questions rather being a freelancer there won't be no one asking me right so there is a lot of probability that i can easily become super lazy this is one of the very uh, high downside i would say and the third one is you will have to work very 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 hard at the initial phase at least for one year you will have to you will have to you know work the deadliest as it as if as if it is the very hardest part of your life because this is how even i had uh, gone through uh, my freelancing journey and even when we talked about uh, when we asked prashant he will also say the same thing at the very beginning stage he would have working so much of uh, he will be putting so much of time and effort on it for example let's say if you are working as an employee 9 to 5 a total of 8 hours you will be putting right so at the initial yeah. phase of uh, freelancing if you are working as a full time freelancer you will have to put at least 15 to 18 hours each and every day to have to have a good result within a short period of time and one reason for that is because nowadays there are so much of competitions so to come out of that competition we will have to be different and we will have to put some extra effort when compared to the others okay and another okay. downside i would say is there is a lot of uh, probability of getting anxiety right so uh, this is where you will have to be lot of patience and for example i have heard so many people coming to me and asking you know hey hamid uh, i have started freelancing for the last 6 months but still i don't have any project i don't get any project so i'm going to quit so this is the normal mentality that most of the uh, most of our people are going to have most even i had at the beginning so this yeah, feeling yeah. will mm-hmm. uh, on the other side will give us anxiety anxiety you know uh, it it will make our life to uh, look on a negative perspective so we will have to be ready to go through those phase of life when we are getting into freelancing and another thing is for example let's say uh, if i am having uh, my wife or if i am having my parents to look after actually i am single please don't think that i am married i am single actually <laughs> so let's say if i have some responsibilities to look after in, at my parents side or at my some other side okay so there is a lot of probability that we will get to have this mental pressure so when we are considering the income and the expenses that we are having each and every day so these are the main five big uh, downsides of being a freelancer so if you guys could definitely, have uh, definitely. considered you know when i was talking about the upsides there are just three when i was talking about the downsides there are just five <laughs> so what i'm trying to say is if you are getting started with freelancing i want you guys to consider all the downside and to mentally prepare for it so this is one of the main thing that i would say Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well said. Well uh, what said, do you yeah. think of these points? <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, you said very right. Uh, means those who wants to start their career as a freelancer, uh, definitely uh, the person has to be self-driven and exactly, has to be yeah. very responsible for his decisions, what he is making, because there uh, the freelancing is not about only doing projects. Like you will take project. finish the projects and deliver it to the client it's more it's about more than that I means uh, uh, that is just a one part uh, there are multiple it's parts kind of, of that also uh, it's kind of a different and unique lifestyle actually i would say 
Yeah. So uh, one, this is not about only doing projects. You also have to be responsible for your uh, for your outcomes. Like uh, you had to generate leads. Uh, it, it's it's a complete process. Uh, that the project is just a single part of that particular process. It's a complete process where you had to contribute in all the process. If it, in the beginning stage when you are working as a solo freelancer. Uh, you have to be responsible for all the process like marketing, lead generation, final deliveries, follow ups and all these things. So it's not about just doing projects. And as, as Hamid said, there are always a pros and uh, definitely there are more cons uh, uh, instead of pros. So just consider all of this, those things. And if you are just if you think that uh, if you are a self driven, driven person or uh, if you feel that you, you you can carry the responsibility of this uh, this profession, then uh, you are just welcome to dive into this new profession, uh, not new profession, the, the common profession, freelancing. So just dive into that, and uh, whatever the decisions you will take, it will affect your. Uh, at, at the end, it is it is going to affect your life, uh, the life of the persons who are just dependent on you. So take uh, decisions wisely. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so that was very uh, very good points that you had uh, discuss, uh, said to uh, to my or to our audience, Samit. So yeah. the next thing that we are going to talk talk about is that uh, getting started tips, uh, especially um, since I had a good uh, uh, limited number of followers on my LinkedIn, but still I receive uh, daily at least four or five requests uh, where uh, lots of newcomers are asking me that. Uh, means how we can start into this uh, uh, profession, how we can start as a mechanical engineer uh, in this freelancing uh, uh, journey. So uh, there are lots of, uh, already there are lots of co contents available on the internet in, in term, I mean, in the form of videos or blogs, but uh, maybe they are not helpful. They they just, they, they do have lots of questions where they want to connect with their, uh, uh, the people who are already doing these things. So that's why I keep receiving these kind of uh, questions from the audience. So I just want to uh, know your views on this. Like, like, what are the tips and suggestions for newcomers, especially who want exactly. to start this? Exactly, this is one of the uh, very important point uh, that most of the mechanic engineers who are getting started as a freelancer will ask. You know, even I have seen people asking me directly. Okay, so here are three main points that I would say uh, if you are being a mechanic engineer and if you are getting started with freelancer. Okay, the first thing is choose your micro niche okay so mechanic engineering is like a big ocean right Definitely. so uh if for example let's say under mechanical engineering we have automotive engineering uh we have thermal engineering we have uh heat transfer engineering and so and so even under design engineering we have so many small niches under design uh field right so i would say the first point that you will have to consider is to pick that one micro niche so some people will be really good in uh, designing automotive parts. Some people will be really, uh, really good in designing shoes or those kind of things. It can be any products, right? So yeah, the first definitely. point that I would suggest is to choose that one micro niche that you are really good at. Okay. And the second thing is, this is one of the very, uh, one of the most asked question, which software should I use? So the second point is that choose one weapon or one software. It can be any software, it can be SOLIDWORKS, it can be Fusion 360, it can be Creo, Katia, Blender, or it can be any software, but pick only one software. And another question that I have, uh, I have seen ask, uh, people asking me is, hey, Hamid, uh, I know Creo, Katia, SOLIDWORKS, I know Fusion 360, they'll be just listing out all the softwares. It is, it is of no use, you know. Instead of getting to know 30% uh, or 40% of 10 softwares, I would say it is much more better if you're getting to know 80% of that one particular software. So this is my second Definitely, point yeah. for uh, freelancers who, uh, who are being a mechanic engineer. Choose that software and pre prepare yourself as a master in that particular software. And a, sec a third thing is whatever the software that you're choosing, whatever the micro niche uh, that you're getting started with designing, try to follow people who are really good in that particular field. For example, if Prashant is really good in uh, designing sheet metals, okay, you can follow him and you can just inactively watch out his projects so that you can test it out on your own. And if you have any doubts, you can just directly ask him. So it will be a really good point to uh, who are getting started as a make freelancers, especially when they are in mechanical design field. So these are the main three points that I would suggest. 
when you are getting started with freelancing and also you want to be a mechanic design engineer yeah 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 definitely because uh, I, the same thing i also uh, listen from the newcomers that they are experienced in multiple software like there are lots of yeah, softwares yeah. but when i listen to them like i was just surprised that how is it possible uh, even till today if i start focusing on solid works mostly then i i i just uh, at, at point of time i just started feeling that i am losing control over fusion 360 so uh, it, it's not like uh, it's it's completely impossible that you will have a very much proficiency in all the four or five softwares you, you can have the knowledge of basic introductory user interface but you can't be a master of all the cat softwares so uh, definitely and there is also lots of confusion about the softwares that uh, that we are going to discuss uh, separately on this session so so anyway that, that was that th those were the very good points that you had said uh, about the newcomers and also uh, all, uh, all the newcomers uh, there is one more tip that i want to add is start early as as soon as possible because uh, exactly. the industry yeah. is industry is getting very crowded these days like uh, everyone is trying to be a freelancer it means even they had a very good settled job they uh, everyone is just starting to hustle for some side incomes so the industry is very crowded prices are going down biddings are going down extremely and so start as as early as possible that is the only point just start uh, keep keep hustling for the things because when you are just starting in the industry when you are newcomer you have lots of time right yeah. you have lots of time to explore you have lots of time to learn new things so just start as much early as possible because when in, in my case i i started freelancing career after my college but uh, for, but for now, the, for, for current generation, I just want to suggest that start in your college days. So th that is the best thing you can do. Yes. Okay. So, so that's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as I said, to as an extension of uh, Prashant's point, uh, it is really important if you are considering to get started as a freelancer and at the same time, if you are uh, if you are a student in college, it will be the best time ever that you can consider uh, to get started with the freelancing. So if you knew one of them who are in life, if you knew one of you are in college student, uh, college, uh, in college life, so this will be the best advice that you will get in the entire session. So get started as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, is one of the amazing point, Prashant. Thanks for, uh, thank you. Thank uh, you. Putting it here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amit. Okay. So we'll move on to our next point as, uh, as Hamid has introduced that he's an expert in fiber and uh, Upwork. And he also got expert label of, uh, experience in those platforms. So I just want to hear from you that, uh, what are the tips that you want to share for our audience? Because, uh, many of the people in our network, uh, have, has already created the his or her profile on Fiverr or Upwork or other freelance platform, but they didn't get any success. Means they are trying, they are bidding, but they are not receiving projects. Even they are not receiving response from the clients. So, yes. what are your five tips that uh, will help them to get started? Okay, so this is, um, uh, of course, I have. Uh, I would say I have almost like four to five points now in my head. Uh, let okay. me try to convey the easiest uh, way possible. Okay. So, okay. The first mm -hmm. most important point that I would suggest for anyone who are coming up with this question that, Hey, Hamid or Hey, Prashant, I have an account on Fiverr or Upwork and uh, I have been trying to bid for projects for the last six months or one year. I'm not getting any projects. So this is going to be the answer for you. Please note it down. Okay. Be active as much as possible. At least you will have to open your Fiverr account and watch it at least like four to five times in each and every day. So this is going to be the super magical uh, tip that I would say if you are a freelancer on Fiverr. So Fiverr uh, unknowingly notes your active time uh, on your profile, right? So this is what happens, you know? So what people do is they will just create a profile and they will be just trying to bid for projects. And, uh, you know, they will be just having it on their phone, Fiverr app. So after like three odd days or five days, they'll be just opening it and they'll be just, you know, thinking on a negative side. Oh man, I'm not getting projects. So after like two weeks, they'll be just opening it. So this is the problem that most of the freelancers are doing. And the downside of it is downside of being like that is we are not going to get any projects and we are not going to see any people knocking our door. 
so what i'm saying is try to uh, even you can use your in a timer or alarm you know just simple of fact you just need to get into fiverr if you are in your system just log into your fiverr and just refresh the page like at least once or twice in a, each, each and every day and that is it that should be more than enough if you are getting started uh, i i cannot say an exact time on which you will get uh, get to see uh, people knocking your door but of course it is going to uh, totally change your uh, uh, life being a freelancer on fiverr or upwork so you should be able to see the result if you are changing this particular fact in on your profile okay and the second yeah. point uh, or the second tips that i would say is have specific time for your freelancing journey for example um if i am working on a company and at the same time if i am working as a freelancer as a part time okay i should have a definite time like let's say 9 9 pm to 11 pm so it will it will have it, it is having uh, more benefit uh, than we think the first thing is it will make us being consistent and the second thing is uh, it won't uh, lose a lot of our time and the third thing is we, if you are scheduling a, a specific time for it we will get to know that okay these are the things that i'm going to work for it so what i'm saying is even though if you are getting projects try to allocate a specific time for it and be consistent in that this is this will be the second tip that i would say and the third thing for anyone not only mechanic engineers for anyone who are getting started with freelancers or build your portfolio portfolio is one of the biggest thing that will help you get more clients right so for example if i'm a client if any one of them who are on live is going to be the freelancer of course i will have to see samples right so it's just like the way that we are choosing tiles or marbles for our home so right so build your portfolio try to polish it polish it as much as possible okay so your portfolio should be like give a look like wow i mean hope that makes sense to you guys okay and the third yeah. thing is keep on practicing keep on practicing you never know what sort of projects that you're going to get okay so this is one of the main thing that i even faced and experienced at the very beginning stage right so uh, at the very beginning stage uh, i got to have this client who wanted to do a uh, design that is kind of quite complex for me at that time right so at that time i had to decline that project so if you are going to be a master in that software and if you are going to be master in that particular field you never get to have a chance to decline any projects especially on the initial phase of freelancing so this is one of the main thing that i learned on my mistakes is i would say okay and the fourth point i would say is uh at the beginning stage be ready to work for free or for even for low prices because you want people's suggestion or people's up, uh, perspective on your work right so at the very beginning stage you will have to be ready to work projects or to take projects for very low prices even if it is going to be free it's totally fine but on the other side if your profile is getting at decent level ranking okay never work for free right so what i'm saying is at the beginning stage be ready to work for free or for very low price once your profile gets to a decent uh, ranking level never work for free just say no to people who are asking for sample works so this is the these are the uh, main five tips that i would say for freelancers especially for people who are in mechanical design engineer field yeah definitely definitely and uh, i'd like to add more point because uh, 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 especially in mechanical engineering domain i i had seen people uh, who are not aware of this portfolio thing what is portfolio so yes. guys portfolio is like uh, uh, being a warrior without weapon so especially for design engineers if you don't if you don't have a portfolio means uh, your resume is not going to speak about your skills designing is all about uh, what uh, work you did what projects you had completed in your past and include that in your document it's very simple uh, i already had uh, recently i had created a video about that there are different online platforms uh, free online platforms where you can create your portfolio also uh, you can just take help uh, from your mentors or uh, anyone from the internet who who are expert in doing the, such things and also you will find lots of videos about that where how to create portfolio and all these things uh, there is no need to create very fancy portfolio in the beginning uh, you can just create very simpler one but it must be uh, eye catching i will say that it will 
if anyone is seeing that portfolio if, uh, even the work is very simple still he will say wow what a portfolio i mean it it will it will look colorful i will say should look uh, uh, appealing uh, to eyes yeah yeah appealing to eyes so this is the thing you can do and uh, as uh, hamid said uh, for the success on fiverr you had to be uh, active as much as possible that is the only way because fiverr i as far i know the fiverr is promoting new uh, new freelancers also so if you will active on this platform uh, definitely in the beginning you will get some uh, leads uh, but if you will not respond that on the time uh, your ranking will go down automatically so this was about fiverr and uh, i we also want to know a little bit about upwork so what are your tips for upwork success uh, uh, upwork it uh, yeah it all works based on your active timing not first priority active but it also consider your active timing and the second thing is uh, how active you are on sending proposals at the very beginning stage you should be ready to even spend money to get connects or if you are really tight in your budget be wise to select projects that you are going to send propose uh, proposals because uh, on upwork we have this uh, form of connects you know that we will have to spend for to send a proposal for each and every projects so be wise on selecting that particular project or uh, if you are okay to spend a little bit of more money be ready to spend money to get connects or buy connects so that will really yeah. help yeah. and the third thing is uh, try to uh speak that uh what to say uh the keyword on your particular niche and to try to involve it not again and again but on random spaces on your on your profile right so upwork also works uh, upwork also work based on seo right so so try to use those keywords let's say uh if you are a, a automotive engineer so try to pick like three or four keywords and randomly place it all over your profile this will really help you get uh you know visibility so that people will directly connect you yeah 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 so as hamid said uh, we definitely had to little bit knowledge about uh, seo as i already said that uh, being a freelancer it's not about projects only you had to be uh, deep dive into other uh, topics also like uh, search engine optimization seo that that he had said so for the keywords to find uh, related keywords on your niche you can just uh, search uh, go for this tool ad super tool it's a free tool where you can uh, it, it's from I, i don't know which company has made this tool but it's free uh, that and it's the results are very accurate so you can dive into that and uh, search for your keywords so uh, this was uh, the hamid view on upwork but what i think about upwork is when you are just getting started in the industry never create uh, your profile on upwork in the beginning because uh, this platform is uh, is is like a gold mine for freelancer once you will get uh, start getting success on upwork the client uh, the earnings and the clients will be endless so in the beginning especially uh, try to not create profile on upwork because once you will get banned on this platform that will be for lifetime means you will never get a, going to get another chance so uh, create a profile on upwork only when you feel confident only when you feel that you will able to handle projects and clients very easily uh, so uh, the up, uh, what i will say upwork is uh, just just like top of the the freelancing industry so uh, avoid creating platform in the beginning uh, there are other platforms also like fiverr and freelancer where you can try okay hamid so we'll move on to discussing our next point and i uh, we got lots of questions also from our audiences uh, that i am noting it down and we're going to discuss that on in the end of the event and i can also see there is a sudden spike in the audience uh, viewers also uh, so yeah. okay so we're going to discuss the, all the questions if you have any questions just put in the comment box we are going to discuss that in the last 15 or 20 minutes So, and we are already running out out of time because, uh, because what we had scheduled we are taking a little bit more than that okay no problem so we'll move on to discussing our next point that is skill building habits or techniques so uh, there are different uh, for this particular topic there may be a different approach based on your uh, your activity so i i just want to know the hamid's point of view that what he thinks about uh, uh, this particular thing because this is also the very important thing because skill uh, development and uh, up updating your skill is very important once you are in freelancing industry 
So Hamid, can you throw some light on this particular topic? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I have almost like two to three very important points that I follow in my life uh, to build my own productivity. Of course, it is going to help a lot of people out there. Okay. Yeah, the definitely. first thing I would suggest is to have your own workspace. That doesn't mean that you need to hire a separate office or separate house for it. So it can be anywhere in your home. So let it be a specific place. So it's like. It's like whenever I'm working, I will come to my room and uh, at the corner of my room, I have my own space. I have my own uh, uh, table where I have my own systems, right? So it also work on your unconscious level. So if you are going to have a specific place and specific uh, uh, environment, it will automatically auto tune on your subconscious that whenever if, if you are on that uh, place it will automatically subconscious uh, automatically and at the same time subconsciously will tune your mind to pre get prepared for that uh, you know working time so that you won't get bored you won't get some un unknown uh, thoughts or, or un unwanted thoughts so it will be much easier for us to be much more productive the first point is definitely yeah. have a specific workspace wherever you are it can be at your home it can be a room on your home or it can be a specific uh, another place where wherever it can be a hotel or it can be a restaurant or something like that okay yes and yes. the second thing is uh this thing that i really follow in my own life uh, it really helped me a lot the thing is um follow three people who are really good in social media at the same time who are really good in you know uh motivating people okay so hope you hope most of you guys might have heard about uh this beer biceps and we uh He's, he's one of my mentor, I would say. I have been following since three years, right? So three to four years, I would say. So it's like he's so active in social media. And so what I'm saying is follow three such kind of people who are really good in motivating people. And at the same time, who are really active in social media. So that whenever you are getting, you know, posts from them, it automatically, when you're watching those contents, it's automatically to motivate you. So at the, and at the same time, they are also going to be very active on social media, right? So you will be keep on following them at the same time. It, those contents are going to keep on motivating you. And at the end, your journey altogether is going to be keep on be productive and uh, getting more insights on how to be uh, motivated and uh, be effective on your journey. So these are the yeah, very yeah. main two points that I would say uh, if you guys follow, it will really help you guys to be more productive, especially in freelancing journey. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, Hamid. Well said. Uh, actually, uh, when I had started freelancing, uh, uh, because we are very common people, right? We we, we don't have very fancy or maybe uh, uh, set up at the beginning. When I, as I had started, uh, I had started in my storeroom. Uh, uh, the, the it was very uh, means crowded space uh, that all the things were random stuffs were kept there but still i started uh, working from there because uh, that has given me a separate space where i can exactly. i can uh, i can explore my uh, minds uh, I, I can explore my mind on the different topics i'm working and so that is a very good suggestion for uh, especially when you are starting on this uh, thing and skill building is not a never ending process once you will start developing your skills uh, uh, once you will start exploring the things you will see there are multiple skills that you can uh, explore uh, but uh, there is also one more thing like uh, when you when you will start skill building uh, just be very specific because uh, there are lots of things in this world once you will start exploring there is a chances that you will get uh, you will you will just lose your path you will get on some other path maybe uh, you are a mechanical engineer and you will start doing something else so that will once again you have to do all the things from ve very beginning to develop that particular skill so try to be very specific and uh, and uh, don't just get distracted because uh, the others are doing and getting success just by seeing them don't get distracted uh, try to focus on your skills your core skills if you are a mechanical engineer uh, then focus on your skills that you had learned during your college. You had, if you already had some basic knowledge about those skills, then it will be easier for you to excel in that particular skill. So uh, just focus on that only. Uh, apart from that, if, if you want to explore other skills, keep some uh, spare time for that, maybe uh, in a day for maybe one hour or something like that. You can explore that particular skill that 
on that particular time also so that is the way you can uh, do the things and uh, just don't get distracted uh, uh, this is the point that i want to add and uh, sorry to interrupt prashant uh, one more thing that i would uh, add uh, on this particular uh, you know habits or uh, productive tips is that try to create <clears throat> to do list okay it will surely yeah. help us to uh, stay tuned or uh, be conscious on what are the works that we are uh, having and also it will help us to prioritize things right yeah so yeah. Uh, for example let's say if my mom is asking to do some work okay and i'm uh, i'm saying i am replying to her that okay mom i have some work to do now maybe i will do it uh, at evening time or something like that i will have to put that on the list so that i will get to know what are the things that are pending on my list and you can add anything that you want it can be anything personal it can be anything professional but put everything on that so that it will help you uh, you know prioritize the things that you are going to do on daily uh, on your daily life right and yeah, one more thing as prashant said is you know never compare yourself with others right so if it all because of the timing okay so i just started freelancing like 3 to 4 years back it's it's been almost 5 years i guess and now if i'm seeing prashant's profile you know he have so much of crazy followings right so it it doesn't make sense if i'm you know being uh, you know uh, if i'm comparing myself with prashant he because he have so much of experience he started much earlier than me right so it all depends on the time that you get started and the experience that you have right so never compare compare yourself with other freelancers because they have their own uh, scenarios own experiences and own situations which yeah, are definitely. making them to be in that position so try to be try to compare your own self or own past self like you know you will have to uh, you know compare yourself for each and every month so that you can uh, stay you you will get to know or you can have a watch uh, to test yourself whether if you are growing each and every day or not yes yes definitely am definitely yeah and uh, 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 when i had started the first project uh, on this freelancing i got was for about 5 dollar i remember i had not worked for free for the first time but uh, it was very less and i remember i had worked for a straight a straight i think 3 or 4 days on that particular project for just 5 dollar Uh, but i had uh, completed that successfully it was just simple autocad Amazing. some drafting work so nice. but that was the day uh, maybe in uh, that was year uh, 2015 or something like that so that was the day and after that uh, i had just keep doing all these things developing skills and all all those things and uh, today is the day uh, i'm just full time freelancer maybe uh, i'm not earning very well but it is still very enough to to be with my family at my home Uh, uh and live a very simple and happy life so it it is just enough i will say yes so i i am very happy uh, i am very happy from my progress and earnings and will keep doing those things and we just we are just doing these things because uh, we just want to educate people uh, who are just want to get into this industry so so uh, we can share our experience so you, you will not get uh, distracted to some uh, some wrong direction or something like that so that's why we are sharing our journey okay so i think with the questions questions list are growing longer i don't know whether we are going to cover this in 15 minutes or not but i'm still noting that uh, okay so we'll move on to the next thing if you if you still have any questions uh, about this skill building or anything you can just put your comment questions in the comment box and i will try to answer them we'll try to answer them in, in, at the end of this session uh, i i mean on the 15 minutes last 15 minutes okay so we'll move on to our next topic uh, i think that is uh, definitely one of the questions or we got is favorite cat tool like uh, which is your your favorite cat tool and why is that uh, your favorite cat tool? okay so there are so much so many cat tools out there so if i am asked a question to pick one tool that is so much of uh, so much of favorite to me i would pick fusion 360 because okay. the user interface is so easy it is easily understandable for even a very lay beginner to uh, try it on their own and at the same time uh, the, there are a lot of options that will save a lot of time to be made there are a lot of features i would say 
Hamid, Hamid, just uh, I just want to add one more point. Like, uh, yes, please, guys. This is this is not a sponsored event that we are promoting any cat software. This yeah, is completely yeah, yeah. based on our experience <laughs> that we are sharing. Yes, so I just yes, want yes, to put yes. this that point. is very important. Yeah. Yeah. So please don't so think that I'm promoting Fusion 360. I have no connections with Autodesk. <laughs> so we are just uh, promoting very good products. Yeah. Okay. So to uh, match this point, I, if I want to select two tools, okay, I would suggest yeah. one from Fusion 360, which is Autodesk, and another from another one is going to be SolidWorks from Desol System. Okay. So yeah. these two yeah. are rivals, you know. So mm -hmm. please don't think that we are sponsoring those people. <laughs> okay. So both the tools are super uh, both the tools have super easy user interface and both the tools are going to be so easy for even a newcomers or very beginners so of course and uh, at the same time when we compare these tools with other tools like cat or uh, uh, free care or something like that uh, to bring or to model a product product uh, a simple product the time it takes to complete it is going to be much lesser on these two uh, software I'm not saying these yeah, are yeah, the two be. best software in the whole world. These are the two best software that I felt much easier and comfortable out of the softwares that I have tried on my own self. It is not that I have tried every other tools out there. So I, I, on our own knowledge, we are suggesting to these, uh, these two softwares that you guys can give it a try if you're getting started with design. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And definitely, guys, uh, Fusion 360 is very good software and it is, it is completely affordable. Uh, if you are uh, going to activate the hobbyist license to explore the software, it's completely free of cost. And uh, uh, if you are a student, then uh, with the full features uh, for one year, it's completely free. You can just go to Autodesk website and you can download it for, for one year for free. You just have to register your account as a student. So that is the benefit for students also. That's why I said start early in the college because there are lots of benefits you are going to get uh, as a student. So uh, uh, that is the Fusion 360. And and the next software I will recommend is uh, definitely the SolidWorks. But uh, I don't know, uh, means uh, we, we expect that SolidWorks is doing something in the back that uh, uh, back end that they're going to bring some affordable uh, affordable licensing prices to compete with fusion 360 but we are not sure about that uh, uh, about that particular product also that whether the product is already available or not that is affordable for us especially for the freelancers because uh, uh, the the reason for selecting these uh, cat tools are uh, i'm going to say that uh, why we are selecting these particular softwares because as we know that when we start working as a freelancer uh, we are not going to work with very large companies like uh, multi-million companies or something like that because the first concern with them is the the end uh, the i will say the ip ip issues intellectual property issue means they are not going to share their files or documents with a single freelancer or a standalone freelancer they prefer to work with uh, registered agencies uh, who are into this service providing so that is the first region so we uh, our target customers are mostly startups and small scale companies and medium scale companies who cannot afford uh, big softwares like uh, those having a very uh, fancy uh, subscription prices so that is the reason we had recommended fusion 360 and uh, definitely the second reason that i want to say is that uh, the easy user interface, big community. If you are stacking at any point, there is a very strong community of Fusion 360. Uh, they will support you. You just have to put your questions on that particular community. It's all on online. You can just go and check it out and you will get uh, get your answer. And the third thing is that uh, uh, the content, the content is the, to learn these softwares, the content is very easily available on internet even for free even for uh, on some nominal prices so it's on you that uh, how you want to go because uh, if you want to save some time you can go with the content that is uh, uh, well organized uh, that, but you have, for that you have to pay some nominal fees i think that's not very big amount but still if you want to explore you can go with that and i think uh, hamid has also created some course regarding this this skill so he will tell you about, uh, more about this uh, I, I, just Hamid, go ahead and tell about uh, about about your course. Means uh, just simply okay. explain the people. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks for giving the opportunity, Prashant. And uh, another thing is that uh, okay, let me give a short brief. You guys, if you guys are interested, you can just have a look at it. Okay, um, I have two of the courses. One is for uh, 3D CAD designing, another is for uh, getting started with freelancers. So both the courses yeah. are going to be helpful if you are getting started or if you are a beginner in both of the fields. So if you are really interested, check out my profile. So uh, and get into those pages, and if it really seems to be fitting your ideology then feel free to go ahead with the purchase yeah so yeah, definitely definitely so guys uh, you can just go and check out his profile also so uh, even if you don't want to uh, purchase the course if you're not comfortable in purchase the course what you can do you can follow him because he is also creating contents related to cad 3d modeling and product design and all these stuff so uh, you want your uh, linkedin feed to be uh, filled with uh, such kind of things right so just give him a follow because the contents will be very amazing he has uh, I, I don't know whether he has a team or not but the contents are very well organized and uh, very well planned so just give him a follow so now we'll move on to our next point uh, discussion point that is the uh, who is your who is your mentor samit uh, who who are you following uh, just just explain people about uh, the mentors who are into this cad industry also the mentors uh, that you follow for your motivation okay so uh, when it comes to mentors um, i would say this guy uh, with the name john uh, that i re- even i posted uh, recently uh, and uh, he's re- one of the what what to say most experienced guy that i have ever seen in designing field so yeah, when yeah, i get yeah. started you know reaching him i was like okay he should be some other guy who, just like me who is really good in uh freelancing or uh, uh, designing right so once i get to start you know connect him or uh, uh i got a chance to speak uh, on him uh on live with him so the moment at that moment is when i got a realized man this guy has so much of things uh from which i can you know uh learn from him so yeah yeah and uh, what i would suggest for you guys is um try to pick as i said you know try to pick you know set a number of followers or set a number of uh, you know people in that particular field and keep on following them and try to copy or try to replicate those pro- projects for example prashant is posting a project or or a design okay so try to work on that design on your own self so that he will be very easy if you are reaching out to him so uh, it will be very easy for him to help you if you are reaching out to him okay and at the same time it will build a strong relationship with prashant and you right for example if i am a beginner and if i am getting started with design engineering as a freelancer and if i am following prashant okay and let's assume that prashant is designing this mouse and he is posting a, a, a content on a linkedin what i will have to do is i will have to try to replicate that particular model in my as in my own design so what i can do is i can just build relationship it will give a chance to build relationship with prashant okay so uh, if i am going to have a long relationship with prashant it will also give another chance as if for example let's say prashant is knowing me for the last uh, few months okay and he is knowing that i am a dead fan of him his works okay and there is a lot of chance that if he is getting lot of projects and if he, if he is not uh, really having enough time there is a lot of chance that he can give the works to me so there are so much of advantages and positive sides in that so when having mentors to follow i would say f- uh, select few number of people on social media try to follow them and try to replicate their own works on their on your own it has many positive sides on your on building your own profile yeah 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 so the the person name is i think uh, the john Mor- moriello uh, i had put given yeah. the link in the comment you can just check it out i um, mean say is a very good uh, product designer uh, he he is also a very famous youtuber uh, with a very good subscriber base you can follow he, uh, you can check out his profile on youtube as well his contents are just amazing uh, he used to review the portfolio of big industrial designers so yes. his feedbacks really matters a lot so guys you can check out him and if you want to follow him you can follow uh, you can follow it's on your choice and if you want to uh, uh, interact more with him it's on you so uh, and apart from this uh, the 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 cat thing or product design thing who are all, all the other mentors that you follow um like uh, that is this guy uh, at the be- very beginning stage i used to follow uh, i forgot the uh, youtube channel name 
uh he do he used to do you know very unique uh, stuffs in soldox or in uh, fusion 360 so what i'm trying to say is it is not like uh i want these follow i um, mean these people that i want you guys to follow these people what i'm saying is at the end it is like you will have to follow those people who are making you feel wow like you know yeah, uh, you will definitely. have to inspire you will have to feel inspiration you will have to get inspiration from those people's design so follow those kind of people it is not a need to follow each and everyone in their field so just follow the people that who are going to inspire you or who inspired you with those works so just keep yeah. on following so as i said you know uh, i forgot his name uh, that i follow uh, regularly on youtube at my early stage so what whenever he posts a tutorial i used to replicate that particular model on my own self so this really helped okay. me building my own expertise in designing building a relationship with that particular guy and at the same time also uh, it also helped me building my own portfolio right so it have as i said you know if you are going to follow these many people on a regular basis it is going to have so many advantages in as many ex- aspects as possible yeah 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 definitely and uh, even i i had started uh, i had learned this fusion 360 cat software by following one of my mentors that is the last last christinen i think you know him uh, he is a very famous uh, youtuber who create contents around fusion 360 mm-hmm, so yes. uh, i just keep following him his contents and that inspired me to learn fusion 360 in the beginning and uh, uh, that is like that so it is it is very important that the person you are following uh, so because at the end it is going to come onto your feed so uh, exactly uh, yes. follow those people only of uh, by which you are getting inspired or uh, by which or by whom's work you are getting inspired so follow those uh, persons only so okay so i think this was uh, the main points that we we had planned for the today and now we'll move on to our question and answer session so we got multiple questions and we had noted it down also so we'll start with the first question that is that is from the abhijit saurav uh, his uh, design and development uh so he's asking that how to get project on freelancer i had already had a account and bidding but somehow not getting any projects so do do you want to answer hamid for this question yeah yeah i would uh, i would happily answer this uh, that question is it like how to get project on freelancer.com or how to get project as a freelancer.com freelancer.com freelancer. freelancer. definitely com. because Uh, yeah it's about bidding yeah unfortunately i have not very active on that particular domain but still as i said if you are going to be very active and if you are going to be you know uh, keep on connecting people on your own it should help and uh, since prashant uh, you are on freelancer you are active on freelancer right freelancer.com yeah, yeah. so i think uh, you can answer this question okay 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 so abhijit what i think is that if you want to be successful on freelancers and the reason because when i had started the competition was very low at that time the thing was like uh, what at what prices i was bidding on the projects at the end i i, I was going to grab that project so it was like that uh, four or five years earlier but after uh, covid 19 the things has completely changed the bidding is very low uh there are lots of uh, freelancers from pakistan and bangladesh they are coming and bidding at at the lowest possible prices i don't know if they are charging those services for free also but i am not sure so for my uh, the there are few hacks that i want to share for the freelancer.com especially because uh, these days i am very inactive on freelancer.com also because we i had started getting leads directly so uh the, the the first step is that uh, try to bid uh, on projects at very odd odd time zones like if you are living in india and you are in ist time zones uh, just try to bid on the projects that are coming on uh, very odd time zones i mean after 11 uh, 11 pm or something like that so that is the time when uh, these uh, two country freelancer i mean the bangladesh and pakistan they are mostly inactive very few are active but mostly are they are inactive the one who are uh, bidding very low those who are all active so if you bid at that particular time there are chances that uh, the the uh, that the, the you will get the project uh, this seems to be a, a, a super amazing tip to follow as a, 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 a freelancer <laughs> yeah. even it is totally new to me okay i will get started on freelancer.com very soon <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah yeah and and the second tip is guys uh, when you have or you are on zero reviews means uh, when you are just newcomer on this platform your whenever you are bidding on a, any project automatically your bid bid goes very down on the ranking so to improve that what you can do you can start uh, contributing in the contests there are lots of contest on this platform where you can contribute and there are chances that you will win because uh, especially in mechanical design domain there are uh, not very competition uh, especially in the contest field but in graphics design and all other domains there are so many competition if someone is posting a contest of uh, logo design of 10 dollar he will receive a design almost uh, 300 or 400 uh, design samples just in the contest entries so uh, try to uh, participate in those contests and once you will get your first review the things will get very easier for you uh, from that part of, uh, means once you will get your first review you will bid will start ranking higher to those who are just newcomers and bidding very low so that is the first thing the third thing is that uh, try to bid as fast as possible once the project is posted just be the first to uh, give a bid on that particular pro project so that is the one thing and include a cta on your proposal whatever the proposal you are writing so it, it's not possible to write a proposal at the moment the project has come always try to create your proposal earlier uh, before start bidding on the projects so just pre prepare a pro proposal and include some cta i mean call to action into your proposal uh, like uh, ask some questions or something like that so uh, that way you can initiate your chat with your client so this way you can do and i think you will uh, be successful avijit if you if you try these hacks uh, i i hope that you will get the success okay so we'll move on to our next <coughs> question that is tabis mokim and he is asking how to find a client easily okay <laughs> okay so to answer this question i would say uh, it is not easy, um, uh, Tabish. It's never easy to get clients. You know, uh, to you can ask this question to whoever you want, who whatever the freelancer you can ask. It's never easy at the very beginning stage. You will have to hustle and work very hard, right? So, uh, as I said, you, it will help you. Uh, you should be ready to work for a very low price or for free. You can try to reach out people on social medias uh, who are doing very good and ask them for free projects or very low project, low price projects. So it will help to, uh, you know, realize how good you are in that particular domain. At the same time, it will also help you get the first few projects, right? First few reviews or feedbacks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Correct, correct. Huh? Okay, so we'll move on to our next question uh, because the, there is no easy path, guys. It's always uh, there is a hard path, and you had to follow. Uh, if you want the easy path, then I don't know. You had to buy some courses from some big institution who are selling for one lakh or two lakh rupees. They will provide you the easy path, but we don't have an easy path. There is always a hard path that you you had to follow to get your clients. Okay, so we'll move on to our next question. Uh, uh, Swaraj Prashant, Deep uh, sorry, Sharma. Prashant, sorry to interrupt. I think uh, Sumit Sharma had asked a question uh, before Tabish Mokim. Okay, okay. What's the question? I think I had missed that. I have completed my SolidWorx mastering course and I want to know how to start freelancing at Upwork. Okay. So as okay. Prashant uh, insisted at the uh, very beginning, if you are getting started with freelancing, uh, Getting started with Upwork is not a very good choice. Uh, it's, I won't say it works for everyone, but there is a lot of probability that if you are not doing very good at Upwork at the initial phases, there is a chance that they might uh, ban us. So what I'm saying is, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I would suggest is, as, and at the same time, as Prashant also suggests, if you're getting started with freelancing, so try to work on Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com. And uh, once you get a good, uh, a pretty decent, for, you know, experience and pretty decent portfolio built, you can get started with Upwork.com. So yeah, it yeah, is not yeah. like, you know, it is not like that. If you are right away getting started at Upwork as a fresher, you will right away get banned. It is not like that. Like we are saying on our, with our own experiences. So it's like you are having a thought that you should not get banned by doing so and so mistakes. So you should be aware of what you're doing and uh, at the same thing, uh, the, just uh, the, the thing that I told earlier, try to build your own portfolio, which will help so much for you to get clients. And especially if you are, if you want to give a few tips about Upwork, just work on the SEO of, on your profile. 
try to be active on sending proposals to projects as much as possible so this should yeah, yeah, uh, pretty uh, uh, clearly help for you to get started as a freelancer yeah 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 definitely okay so the next question i think i think we had answered swaraj uh, deep sama right yes. yeah okay uh, i think he, he got his answers. answers okay okay so we'll move on to our next question that is from onkar pawar am i right onkar okay yeah so he has asked that many of engineers don't buy don't have money to buy software is there any need of genuine software requirement to start work as freelancer so, okay, so i had already we had yeah. can i yeah, can please i answer go ahead, that I mean, yeah, yeah yeah please go ahead so, prashant you have more experience than so, me yeah please go ahead we we had already uh, discussed this in this all event that that's why it said start early as possible once you are in college you will get most of the softwares for free just for the learning not for the commercial use but if you once you will have the experience and you, will re, you are ready to start uh, into the industry so you can buy some affordable softwares like fusion 360 and there are some other uh, softwares also like on safe and all those things that will uh, help you to finish your projects whatever the projects you are getting because in freelancing you are not going to get very big a product design project there will be smaller projects but uh, at the end they are not going to ask for the source file they are going to ask, ask for the very common file formats like stl file format step file formats or maybe some other file formats it depends upon your project yeah so based on that you can uh, choose some affordable software and at the end guys you are an engineer come on don't ask this question we are indian jugadu so just <laughs> just use your ways that uh, how you can manage and uh, one more thing to add uh, if you really want to be genuine and legally proceed with your freelancing journey and that is the software uh, called freecad f r e e c a d yeah. it's totally free and yeah. it's an open source uh, software so if you're feeling like you want to be genuine with this kind of lic- licensing thing and if you're feeling like you have to have license or you don't want to use pirated versions you can get started with this particular software Yes, Free yes, cat, yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, guys, uh, if you if you want the link for that particular software, or you can just uh, reach out to me. I will give you the link for that particular software. So, even if you Google it, you will get the software. So, don't worry about that. Okay, I think we had answered the Onkar Pawar. Now we'll move on to our next question. That is from Hardik Boryud. Boryud, I don't know what's its Borud. exact pronunciation. anyway okay. so uh, he what he is saying that need freelancer for honing process improvement and troubleshooting which platform will give such freelancer okay so i can answer this uh, okay so what i can see from his requirements that he is uh, some kind of manufacturing company where he need a freelancer that is available physically or into his company and will able to help them with his honing process so uh, uh, for such kind of things what you can do uh, there are lots of different uh, social media groups where you can post your requirements because finding a freelancer through freelancing platforms will not be a very good solution for this you, you can you can search on the linkedin also you can post uh, you can create a post and uh, post it on the linkedin platform and i think the uh, you can use the uh, asp- yes sorry sorry yeah, yeah please go ahead okay. prashant sir so, so there are lots of um, uh, just just include uh, uh, very specific hashtags uh, on your post and there are chances that whoever uh, are expert in this particular skills will uh, try to reach you and you can just contact with them and proceed further so that is the best solution for this particular thing okay so the next thing is next question is from fan fanil gandhi uh, he's a gandhi. student member at asme and okay he is also a student okay so he is asking that instead of knowledge of softwares what should mechanical engineers know to become a successful mechanical design engineer okay i am very happy that fanil is asking that he, in his college days uh, this question is uh, very important especially for mechanical engineers so i think hamid will answer this question because he has a master degree yeah. also uh, in, in this particular field Okay, so uh, the question is: Instead of knowledge of software, what should mechanical engineers know 
uh, to become a successful mechanical design engineer right so it's like a part of knowledge yeah. in software or instead of knowledge of no, okay it's, it's, so let me answer both yeah okay 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 so um let me let me try to uh, answer this in a very simple way okay uh, mm-hmm. it is like anyone can learn any software guys okay so please come out of this mindset that if you are really good in uh, doing any models or doing uh, work on features on any software it is not that you are, you are a good design engineer right so you need you need experience on designing each and every forms or every shapes of the model on your own right so without having experience you can go through any courses or you can go through any long hours course that does not will ever mean that you are going to be a good design engineer right so i would say that you need experience on designing each and every products this is how i learned personally so when i was getting started as a freelancer uh like when i was uh, having this course 3d cad designing course on my college days so uh, i used to you know design each and every products that i see on our, on uh, on my daily lives so, so uh, the first design that i made is to model a uh, water bottle that i had on my table okay so just keep on trying uh, making models of the products that you see on your own life this will of course give you more experience and experience on designing multiple products is what going to make you a, a good design engineer you can you can have so much of certificates you can have so much of you can go go through so much of hours of lectures so a part of this the one thing that is much more important is to have experience on your own like hands on experience on designing multiple products so this is what will help you to become a good mechanical design engineer yeah yeah definitely definitely and a uh, few more things i want to add that uh, uh, if you want to be a good mechanical design engineer then just explore in the beginning uh, in the final year of your college just explore that what field you want to go like there are lots of different areas yeah, there are automotive domain aerospace domain or there are multiple domains so just explore the things that's why uh, there are a, there are a thing called final year project where you can explore yourself that what particular area you want to go ahead in your in your career either you want to uh, start doing a job or either you want to go for your further studies but just you have to explore that with particular area if you want to go to robotics then in your final college final year project you have to start exploring that particular thing even uh, if it is possible try to do this earlier so that is the way uh, you can do that and uh, c- connect with your right mentors uh second is the second is the this thing that correct connect with your right mentors that will guide you properly and the third thing is that uh do the things by your own hands that is the way don't try to be a very white collar just exp- uh, just jump on to the field and try to do things with your own hands that is the way you can uh you can be a good mechanical design engineer open everything what you see like uh we we seen in this particular movie what was that uh Amir Khan's favorite movie Three Idiots yeah three idiots Oh okay <laughs> yes open everything what you are saying <laughs> that's the best way explore, Just explore inside explore on your own inside. yeah explore yeah. on your own yeah Okay, okay. uh Prashant uh, I think Ali is yeah. on the top have uh, asked a question I think we have missed it um uh, Ali is Sunesera Uh, hello prashant and hello hamid kalvati i am currently working as a design engineer in a thermal and fluid sector so he is asking us to suggest a stream which he can work as a freelancer so if i want to answer this particular question i would say that uh, it's you who can decide which works well for you right so uh, try to figure out that one field that your so much uh, expertise in and at the same time try to figure that particular one field that you love to work on so pick yeah. that one particular field and get master in that field and uh, if you are doing these kind of thing uh, things of course when you are getting started as a freelancer you will get to see positive results right so yeah. any other uh, yeah. suggestions it, from you prashant yeah 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 definitely if he is from fluid and thermal field then i think definitely uh, he has lots of option to go like he, he can deep dive into hbsc field there are lots of possibilities of freelancing there are lots of project on freelancing 
uh, also uh, i believe that if he has some knowledge about uh, simulation he can just explore some of the free simulation tools like uh, i don't remember the name uh, exactly is, uh, is it free i'm i'm not sure actually uh, but uh, ansys is also available on student license it's completely free to use uh, you can you can just explore that software so that is also a, a thing that you can uh, uh, provide as a service uh, that simulation thing that is the skills are very uh, limited in the industry so that there is a very good chances that you will uh, you will get started in the industry very soon so uh, just explore it i think the hbsc and uh, simulation are the best options for him okay okay and the next uh, next question i think is from neeraj Vir virnale yeah he, he also had a very good question like what payment methods involved in these sites and what are the things to keep mind in advance to avoid frauds yeah definitely it's a very good question and uh, uh, do you want to answer that uh, or I'm going to answer that? Yeah, please uh, go ahead Prashant. It seems like you yeah. have very good experience. So uh, guys, uh, uh, if, yeah. you, if, uh, if you don't have any idea about the payment methods, that it's very simple. Uh, uh, most of the time it is going to be a direct bank transfer. Or if you don't want to get uh, into trouble, you can also try this PayPal thing. Uh, PayPal is all uh, is from I think is from Elon Musk. He has created that particular product. It's a platform where you can accept payments from uh, globally. So you can you can create account and you can verify your bank details on PayPal. And uh, by using that PayPal link, you can start receiving your payments. If you don't want to get uh, into those things, you can also try the direct bank transfer. Like uh, on the freelancer.com, there is an option called. Uh, a, uh, a direct bank transfer where you can submit all of your account details like bank account number and all these things and uh, once the payment is a milestone is re released on the freelancer.com against your project you had completed that payment is with the freelancer.com and once you want to uh, take that particular amount to your bank account you can you just have to press few clicks and otp verification and the amounts will get transferred to your bank directly but there is always a, a particular amount of charges that they are going to deduct uh, either it's transfer charges either it's conversion charges or either it's the fee for the project so these are all charges also associ associated with these things and uh, if you talk about uh, frauds so there are there are uh, this is the very uh, important thing that we have to take care of like uh, there are so many uh, frauds are going on uh, on these freelancing platforms like uh, someone will hire you and uh, they will promise you that uh, they will uh, pay you for uh, any particular project once you will finish the project uh, and once they, you will submit the work they are never going to reply you so that is the one thing second thing is that uh, they will connect with you and they will ask you for the advance payment to place the project like 10 percent on their paytm or something like that so uh, there is the second thing and the third thing of fraud is like uh, uh, this bank, re the, the credit card reversal system that is very yes. common on this freelancing pl platform. So we cannot uh, do anything with that. The third thing is completely in their policy, like freelancer.com or fiber.com's policy. If client wants to reverse its payment, even after two years or four years, he can reverse the payment and take back all of your earnings. So this is a common thing that you have to be prepared because uh, we can't do anything. There is a policy. Uh, uh, they had already created a policy uh, regarding this. So uh, once we, uh, I don't know whether in future they're going to change this thing. But for now, it's like that only. And for for the other frauds, what I will say is, is always try to start project only. The client has created the milestone payment. So the payment is always safe with you. Once you had completed the project, even the client is not releasing the payment against your uh, project completed you can just uh, complain with the freelancer.com or fiber.com there will be a case raised against between you and your client and the team will verify that uh, who is uh, right on this particular topic and final de decision will be based on that only so on this point also most of the time the the clients are uh, given preference so be ready for that and the second thing that that direct thing that uh, uh, for any project the client will ask for 10 percent payment from you also so uh, the common reason to avoid such frauds is just say no and uh, report that particular client to directly to freelancing website just report them that uh, they are illegal activities uh, going around the platform so that is the thing so i think i had answered and the question 
and guys sorry to interrupt prashant and to add a point yeah. uh, it is not like everyone are going to be frauds and it is not like yeah. everyone are going to be too good to you so you will see both good people and at the same time you will also see will see bad people so you should be yeah, ready yeah. to you know face both the kinds of people and uh, there is a lot of chance that people can easily you know uh, you know cheat us when i uh, you know they will say that okay i am looking for a long term so please do this project for free and i will give you thousands of projects after this so try to you know be act wisely when you are uh, seeing those kind of uh, people so yeah, you yeah, will get yeah. to know you know uh, when you are having so and so experiences on your own it's okay yeah definitely yeah once you will spend time on this uh, this profession you will learn the things so the next question is from abhijit patel i think uh, he is also a student or maybe a design engineer okay so he is asking that which domain have most projects so okay guys, uh, let me on. explain uh, this question prashant okay so yes. uh, we cannot say a definite answer for this question so it's like okay if a platform is going to have a lots of projects it's like there are going to be lots of freelancers as well right so we cannot say yeah. that okay if i get into this pro- uh, particular platform i'm going to get lots of pro- projects okay if you if a project if a, a platform is going to have lots of projects there are going to be lots of competition as well so it's like whichever the platform that you are getting into there is kind of an equal uh, probability that you will uh, get a certain number of projects at the initial phase so please keep on uh, and please stop worrying about uh, you know or keep on uh, st- uh, please stop wasting time on uh, doing a research on uh, picking that one particular platform just do a little bit research and uh, just make your decision and just jump into any one or two platforms at the beginning stage it should work very fine yeah 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 okay so the next is fanil gandhi i think he has asked questions that there are many sub domains in design domain how to select it and how freelancing will affect on that domain i think we had already answered this question in uh, in our discussion so yes. okay we'll move on to our next question that is sumit sumit sama he is asking that i am on of work so how can i get project in solid works so it's it's very simple just include some keywords in your profile and uh, based on that the upwork will suggest you the the proposals uh, where you can submit so uh, you can just submit uh, the proposals and the only way is to try to submit very authentic proposal create very appealing portfolio and i think uh, it, if your work is very appealing and very act uh, it will act to the point very uh, appropriately then definitely you are going to get your project right so do you want to add anything hamid um like as i said uh, at the very beginning stage i'm just saying to all of the people have whoever asked any questions okay at the very beginning stage you will be having a lot of confusions and a lot of questions so as prashant insisted a few minutes couple of minutes back just dive into it explore yourself it is not like i it is i'm not just justifying the point that we are not going to answer so what i'm saying is even after this live session you are going going to have some questions okay so just yeah. di- dig in di- uh, dig in deep and dive in inside the platform so you will get to learn some things on your own okay and as i said uh, earlier on upwork it work uh, ba- works mainly on um, seo based so if you are really interested in getting projects on solidworks try to use the word solidworks as many times as possible use it on your title use it on your uh, description use it on your portfolio so this is how the upwork seo works hope that yeah, makes yeah, sense definitely yeah yeah definitely it makes sense i think uh, the people are getting answer to their questions uh, if you still have any questions or doubt you can reach out uh, to us on any time on linkedin we are almost available we'll all answer. the time on linkedin yeah definitely so okay so the next question from i think is from ankush kim sera sara so is it compulsory to buy the software for freelancing so we had already answered that question right uh, 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 you don't need to yes. buy the software you had to buy the software that is affordable and uh, just just explore the software first actually which software you are expert in and what is your uh, what are your clients requirements or what is the industry that you are targeting so it depends upon that uh, also 
whether you had to buy the software or or the open source softwares are uh, enough to meet your needs okay so hello hamid are you there yeah yeah i am here i think there is okay. a problem on the signal yeah please go ahead. no problem okay no problem that's understood okay so is there any other questions that we got apart from that uh, this ankus and uh, harish kumar gaja gaja kosh websites like fiverr and upwork take up considerable part of your earnings ever thought of having your own website without using platforms like fiverr so it is really good it is like having your own website is like uh, having your profile on social medias like uh, linkedin instagram and uh, uh, facebook so i would suggest instead of having your own website you can just have your own uh, you can build your own profile on any of these social media platforms it will of course yeah. help people uh, to reach out to you directly if you are making uh, if you are giving good values through your own contents yeah yeah definitely yeah because uh, in creating a website and everything there is always a cost associated with it so when you are just starting out you are not you will not be very happy to spend uh, uh, any particular amount uh, before earning anything so uh, just uh, start on these platforms even after the cut the amount if, if you are good enough in your skill the amount will be very good uh, for you uh, so uh, just start on these platforms in the beginning and once if you if you feel confident with your skills and the service you are providing you can just slowly slowly you can start building your own platform you can start building your own audience and uh, this way it will work okay so the next question we got few more questions uh, from mahesh kakar how you look on 3d printing related tech and if someone want to make expert which domain available so uh, uh, i i don't get this question actually okay so he is asking about the 3d printing uh, domain which is getting so boomed on the uh, uh, and the present stage right so actually you are right mahesh 3d printing is one of the uh, very booming industry nowadays and uh, it's getting so demand so uh, to suggest uh, to answer this question prashant kumar have so much of experience in 3d printing you can directly reach out to him if you have any uh, questions or uh, he will uh, definitely help you on the other side uh, even myself have a pretty decent experience on 3d printing and even i have considered this on my own course so if you're interested you can just reach out to me and i will be happy to help you with that course and yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, if someone want to which particular domain there are lots of domains you know uh, even 3d printing mostly people be we, pe people will be using to uh, 3d print products so if you have any further questions you can reach out to prashant or even me you'll be happy to help you. yeah 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 okay okay so i think mahesh what you can try you can uh, focus on the domain that is i think consumer uh, consumer products because uh, uh, those are the most demanding uh, domains in the third depending industry uh, where the requirements are also very high so the consumer products is good for you good for you apart from that you can uh, it's completely based on the tech means what is the technology you have access with so uh, means because uh, 3d printing has lots of limitations you cannot make anything on 3d printing uh, you will need a different custom 3d printers for different kind of domains to service so based on that you can select a domain okay the next is uh, this sivam mittal how much can experienced design engineer ask for freelance project compared to fresher okay so sivam this is very simple no one is ask are going to ask you for the experience in this freelancing industry the only thing they need is a good portfolio your skill level uh, that will be presented by your portfolio that uh, uh, how much is skilled in your uh, domain i mean in whether you are in automotive or you are in aerospace or in robotics so just show your experience on your portfolio and that that is the only thing you don't have to be a 6 or 7 the inter no, no one going to talk about the how much interval of time you had experience with that they, this is all about just how many projects you had completed exactly. and uh, uh, how how uh, beautiful how uh, accurate is your portfolio means if if i if i am a client and i had a requirement of sheet metal and if i want to hire you uh, so i will just search for the sheet metal examples in your portfolio if it is not there you are you are having no experience for me but for maybe other clients if you if your portfolio is having lots of 
automotive uh, samples then definitely for them you are a uh, very good person for them very good freelancer yes. for them so this is how it works okay okay hamid i think we had already uh, spent more time i think we had scheduled this yeah, session for the for the one hour yes but uh, but to answer all the questions we had already taken 30 minutes i think so yes. thank you so much guys uh, all the audience who are watching us uh, for this much of longer time uh, you had asked so many valuable questions that uh, that that is going to add so much value to the industry so much value to uh, our lives so thank you so much and uh, uh, hamid if you want to say something in the last no that is it guys so just keep on uh, practicing and uh, make yourself as a master in that particular field and don't worry so much just dig in deep and just dive in in dive in with any platform you will get to learn yourself uh, with uh, day by day and if you guys having we both to help you guys in, in if you guys stuck in anywhere feel free to reach out to us we will be happy to help you or assist you in a dire right direction if you couldn't okay so that is it with from uh, from my side guys so thanks so much for being active um with ourselves so we really appreciate it thank you okay okay guys thank you so much thank you so much for watching and thank you so much hamid for coming on this session uh, likewise prashant thank you so audience. much for uh, so, uh, likewise thanks so much for inviting me and giving an opportunity to you know help these uh, many people it was so great okay okay thank you thank you thank you so much hamid uh, maybe we can collaborate uh, some other day on some other things exactly. also yes. so thank you thank you so much everyone we are just concluding this session over here thank you